Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today we are going to talk about everybody's favorite topic, sanding drywall. So the very basics of what you're going to need for sanding drywall are a mask, a decent sanding sponge, a sanding pole, and I usually like something like a four inch knife. So first let's get into the sanding poles. So I think it's well worth your time to try and find a decent sanding pole. This one is the better than ever super sander. You're only gonna find this at drywall supply stores. What you don't want if you can avoid it is one of these crappy plastic drywall sanders. If that's all you can get, sure, go ahead. But they don't articulate as nicely and they have a tendency to flip a lot. So I definitely recommend looking for one that's metal that has a better swiveling action than these plastic ones. So next you're gonna want some sandpaper and I don't just rip it off of a sheet. So these are actually special sandpapers that are made to attach to a sanding pole. And you can find these at most paint places, hardware stores. So this is my first coat and I'm gonna be sanding with 100 grit, which is pretty aggressive. For a lot of people, I might recommend actually going to 120. For my first coat, I just like a cheap piece of sandpaper that gets burned up and thrown out after the first coat. And also, let's take a quick look at this sanding pad. So. This has a nice flat surface. I like it to be flat because when sanding my first coat, I want this to sort of plane down the drywall. If you're using a foam back sandpaper on your first coat, it's gonna ride over the bumps and not level them out. So let's take a look at the kind of things we're looking at to sand on our first coat. So what we are looking at here is a lift off. That's when I pull up with my trowel and I lift it off the wall and it leaves these ridges or lines. So this is what your first coat should have in it, is a bunch of lift offs like this. And when sanding these, I usually like to go with the lift off, like so. And so now, it was really quickly sanded down and it's nice and smooth. So now let's get to the whole wall. So when you've got a bigger wall like this, and you've got all your lift offs, and it's your first coat, you don't need to be sanding the bejesus out of everything. Like we're not trying to take everything down. We're just trying to take the high spots down. If you've got low spots, you don't want to be over sanding, trying to make everything smooth. That's part of the whole point of having this firm pad and the thin paper is just to take down all the high spots. So I'm going to quickly sand this wall. So as you can see, it was a pretty quick sand. There wasn't a lot I needed to do. And I usually don't sponge anything at this point. And I also don't sand my corners. Corners should only take one coat over top of tape. So you shouldn't be sanding those until you're finished sand. Otherwise you're gonna be scratching them up. However, I do find that sometimes I do need to detail some things up to make sure that they're gonna coat really nicely on the next coat. You know, you can also scrape things away and level it out that way a little bit, but it doesn't flatten it out quite as nicely as sanding. So your next coat will go better if you detail some of those little things in the corners, you know. And again, I don't mean sand the corners, but I mean, you, it's hard to get your sanding pole right up into the corner, so sometimes it just needs a little bit of work before your next coat. Another thing that helps tremendously is to have a nice bright light and shine it directly down the wall. That way you can see where you still need to sand and when to stop sanding. And let me show you something. This is where to stop sanding. If at any point you see your tape coming through, stop sanding immediately. It means it hasn't been built out enough in the surrounding area. So first let's go over some basics in sanding form. So it doesn't matter which way you feel like sanding, so much as it's horizontal, up and down, diagonal. I mean, like I said though, it's important that you sand with your lift offs to plane them down and to flatten that joint off. So you want to sand in the direction of your lift off. 
But what I'm really talking about is the form, the way you sand with a sanding pole. So you never want to go like this with the pole perpendicular to the head, like this. Because what's going to happen is it's going to flip on you, especially if you're using one of those cheap sanding poles. However, you also don't want to go the opposite, which is totally parallel with the sanding head, because what can happen is the sharp edges of the pad can actually leave deep grooves in your mud, like these. So the best way to sand is with your pole at just a slight angle to the sanding head. So kind of like this. And that does two things. One, it stops the straight line of the sanding head from leaving those deep gouges. And two, it actually also increases your sanding surface. So you're actually going to be a little bit more efficient too. So always try and keep it tilted just a little bit. And it's not like a 45 degree angle. It's about like a 10 to 20 degree angle. Just a little bit. So that's first coat. So I'm going to coat everything in here and then we're going to film the finished coat sanding tomorrow. Okay, so this is now finished coated and ready to sand. So for sanding this coat, what I really like to use is some foam backed sandpaper. So this stuff comes in a roll. It's 180 grit, it even says it right there. And actually I find this 180 can be a little bit too non-abrasive. I like 150 burned down a bit, but we're getting a bit technical here. So the order of how I like to sand, this is important because this is what's going to make sure that you don't miss stuff. So first off, if you have a light, turn it on. The reason for that, okay, plugging it in helps too. There we go. So the reason, let's get right up close here about having a light when you're sanding. Can you see these lift offs and everything? So when I'm sanding and I have the light shining down the wall and I can see it this well, I'm able to figure out exactly how much I need to sand. Couple passes there, couple passes here, and I can just keep moving on. And I don't spend any more time sanding than I need to. When I don't have the luxury of having a light, what I find is I easily spend 50% more time sanding because I'm just being really thorough to make sure I got everything. And in this case, I have to do the absolute minimum sanding I need to. So let's get back to the system of sanding that I was about to get into. So I have a system and what I like to do is I always start in the corner. So I burn my edge down and I get as close into the corner as I can. So I'm maybe a half an inch to an inch away. And you really want to be careful not to bang into the corners. That's where you see all these nice little dents in the corners when people are doing that. So I'm going to go into my corner right here. Same thing. Stay away from the corner. So right now I'm really going to focus on the edge. That's the first thing I always do is burn the edge down. And it usually takes just one pass like that. And so now I'm going to go right into all of this. And I'm staying just as far away as I can. And then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do the whole perimeter. Getting as close as I can. So I'm actually going to quickly put my mask on because I do film with a mask and our filmer Nick is going to put his tradesman special mask on. Highly effective. Okay, so I've done my corner and now I'm going to go over all of this, which is way more sanding than a regular joint. Maybe actually let's go into the hallway where we have a really easy joint to sand because this is going to take forever to film. I'm going to do my corners. We're just going to do this one wall real quick. Still shining, but I dented my wall. 
back at it. So we're going to get the edge and the inside. I'm going to stop here because I ran out of floor. Back. I'm going to send this. I'm going to go here. Here's a little tip if you're in a hallway. What I usually like to do, because usually the other side of the hallway is going to be a finished wall, I put my hand like this because you're going to be way less likely to damage the wall and you're going to try not to hurt your hand, which is going to help you not dent the wall. Edges. Now the whole surface. Okay, now we got our screws. Your screws should not need much, just a couple pushes on each one. sand a wall here. I like to go around the perimeter and then I work my way down the joints and then I do my screws. So now that you've seen how I like to do the wall, perimeter, working my way down to the joints, down to the screws, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this whole wall, which we're not going to film the whole thing because that is boring as sin, but once I'm done that I'm going to show you how I do the angles. Ah, very quickly let me explain why I like to do the edge first. So if I sand everything nicely and then push really hard to burn down the edge, what will happen is I'm going to scratch the bulk of the, of the surface. So when I sand the edge, I actually push super hard to get rid of it, like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to scratch in here a little bit. So next, I sand gently into the joint, like so, with a light so I can see it all. And I got to get my mask back on guys. Okay, so I'm going to finish this. You get an idea of how this gets done. Do the edge, work your way in, and don't push hard on all this. The harder you push, the more you're going to scratch it. Make sure you can see it with your light so that you know what you're actually doing. Okay, so sanding corners now. So I like to use these sponges, the ones with the angle on them on one side. And I really don't like to sand with anything other than these. The other thing I do is I like to tear away this little edge. So I just tear at it, you know, sort of like when one of my kids is being destructive and picking at something, just tear that away. So sanding corners. So we've already done the edge and it's sanded up as close as I could get. So now it's just simply a few quick pushes. And that generally takes care of it. And so if there's, the reason I tear this bit off is because what that does is it stops it from leaving a sharp line. So if you've ever seen a super sharp line one inch away from the corner, it's probably somebody's sanding sponge. And then, so it's a couple of quick passes usually, and depending on how you've coated it, it could be more, but I'll give it a couple of quick passes to crisp up that corner. I find when I coat it by hand, they sand so easily. I get into the corner here, I'm going to do a couple right here. And if you want a video about how to do three-way corners really well, I have one of those already. I will link it in the description below. But yes, yeah, just a couple of quick passes here, I'm going to do this top angle. And now is the point where this comes in. So if there's anything I see that I still want to tune up, that's where I start to put pressure with my fingers on this edge of the sponge. And I just, so see if you can see that right there. Can you? Yep. Okay, so something like that, I'm now gonna put a little bit more pressure on that spot to try and make it disappear. 
and it's really good to stand with a light. Some people will carry a trouble light, so a handheld lamp, some sort of light in their hand while they're sanding, and they're gonna look for everything like that. And that's why I love these angled sponges because you can really nicely get in there without damaging the other side. And you've also got to watch out for right here, I've left a sanding sponge with lines. So you've got to feel for those or look for those. And just a quick pass will usually take care of it. So again, we're going back up here. I've got that in the corner. That. And this is a brand new sponge, so it's leaving little lines here because it's so firm. So I've got to quickly do that. This doesn't look quite right, so I'm gonna give it just a little bit more attention with that angled side. Up here, I can see I've left one of those lines again, so I'm gonna pass really quick, like that. Corners really make or break your job, so you wanna do a nice job. And then I know I've left a line, so it's gonna quickly go like that and like that. And then that's usually done. And if I see anything that needs a little more work, get up there. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting my fingers under here, like so, to hold the sponge up. And I'm also trying to keep this corner off the wall as I detail it with that angled bit. See how I'm doing that? So that way I'm not leaving a sharp line right here which will take another couple of passes to fix. Although I usually use corner tools and my corner tools actually leave a corner that is about the same width or even a bit narrower so I don't leave that sanding sponge width line. Anyways, that's a whole different story. So the next step is to do all of your detail sanding. So all of the spots that your pole sander couldn't get into or any of the scratches that you may have left from pole sanding. So it's just quite simply getting into all the corners, getting everything nice and leveled out. And again, you're still gonna want to be careful that you're not leaving lines or new gouges from sanding. Well, it can be a fair bit of work. The detail sanding can sometimes take the longest. Well, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. That's all I can tell you about sand and drywall. Anyways, I hope you found this useful. I hope this makes your next sanding project go way better and your finished product much nicer. So, until the next video.